As I have shown, we want to use a two-way speaker system. And my idea was basically, if you already start making an uh, old passive speaker to an active one, we can also make it like DSP powered because we have a ESP32 and ESP32 has a lot of computational power. It is running at 240 megahertz. And we are also having like a floating point unit and hardware integrated. So why not integrating a DSP inside? I mean, I have shown you all the basics in my STM32 videos and we are just trying now to apply the knowledge to the ESP32. And this is basically my concept idea. So at first we have here our ESP32 and the ESP32 is receiving the audio signal via Bluetooth. Then we are having internally basic uh, stereo audio stream. And the first thing we do is that we are summing up the stereo audio stream to a mono sum signal because we have only one speaker. And then we are splitting the path basically into two ways. So one way for the woofer and one way for the tweeter. And for the woofer here, we are applying three IIR filters. So one time a 40 hertz high pass. Now you might wonder why applying high pass filter to woofer. Yeah, the idea is basically that the woofer is not able anyway to reproduce like extremely low frequencies like 20 or 30 hertz if you have like such a small speaker. So we can just make a high pass filter here and filter out all high energy, low frequency stuff so that the speaker is not so much stressed anymore. Then we are applying a 2500 hertz low pass filter. Um, I had a look in the data sheet from the speakers who will use the splitting frequency before was already around about 2.5 kilohertz, something like this. So I will also use this frequency once again. This is just one single IR filler with a Q of uh, 0.7. And then we are applying something I call personally uh, some fun factor um, that we are applying an equalizing filter, which is doing like plus 5 dB at 60 hertz. So that we get a little bit more bass out of the speaker directly out of the box without making any additional equalizers in Spotify or something like this. And on the other side, we have like our pass for the tweeter and this is just a high pass filter at 2.8 kilohertz. And then we are just putting those two samples into the I2S transmit buffer. This is transmitted to our audio DAC, the PCM5102. And basically the here it is uh, converted from digital to analog domain. And then we have on our one channel, like the signal directly for our woof and on the other channel, directly signal for our tweeter. So we can directly amplify it through a class D amplifier and directly connect the speakers without using any more a passive frequency splitter. Yeah, and from power concept perspective, um, I have everything like check that it is running up to 24 volts if you need like quite high power. And then we are using a five volt DC DC buck or step down converter, how you want to call it. And uh, a DC DC converter is supplying with five volts one time our ESP32. And on the other hand, also like um, our audio DAC and the 24 volts inputs are directly connected also once again to our class D amplifier. But now let's have a look uh, more in detail how the DSP is working. If you have now a look on the folder structure, I have created a new project, which is based on the old project from my previous video, the A2DP sync. And I extended it uh, with the DSP functionality basically. So therefore we have a DSP.h um, file in here. If we go now um, here into the source code, I have shown you already last time that there was a problem with the source code that you were not able basically to modify the volume and I fixed this code. And if you have a look here in the code, you can see here like a command I square S write data buffer item size, blah, blah, blah. So this means basically that here at this point, you will receive a data buffer of basically unit eight T uh, type data. And you get also like here an item size. So basically you get back in buffer with some samples in it and it will also give you the information how much samples are basically in it. And usually it is like this that like you always have like left sample, right sample, left sample, right sample. And this is done or this is included in one big data buffer more or less. And after processing here the volume, which I have fixed last time, I uh, did another command here, which is called process data. And we are just giving here the pointer of the incoming data buffer and also like the information how much uh, data we have in here. 
So now let's have a look into the DSP handler. Um, this is now my function process data. You can see uh, that at first uh, I'm restoring the samples. Uh, so for left sample, right sample, and I'm just summing this up to mono signal. And then I'm already processing here my IRR filter. So I have like the in sample, which is my mono sample. Then I have like low sample for a woofer, high sample for the tweeter. And here I'm applying the uh, 40 or 45 hertz, I see actually a high pass filter. Uh, then the low pass filter, 2.5 kilohertz and my 60 hertz EQ. And then on the other side for the tweeter, I'm just applying here my 2.8 kilohertz high pass filter. And then basically I'm restoring uh, the sample back once again to the buffer, which is then written into the I2S hardware. This is my function for processing the IIR filter. Um, I made it a little bit more generic because last time on the STM32, I made it very like step-by-step -step coding and, but this is for sure not efficient for something like this here. And then here I have like the structs for my IIR parameters. And if you have a close look, you will see that I have uh, for every filter, I have four sets of IRR parameters, one time for 16 kilohertz, 32 kilohertz, 44.1 and 84 kilohertz. Because the problem is that the ESP32 doesn't know with which sample rate the smartphone will stream the data into it. So it can handle possibly uh, four different sample rates. And the information on the, on the sample rate we are receiving basically in that file and in this function. And here you can see how it is switching between the different sample rates and is trusting the I2S hardware on the sample rate. And then I'm just getting this information here into my DSP file. And this is also just setting here then the sample rate. And depending on which sample rate is used, basically it will always use a different set of um, IIR filters here. Yeah, and that's basically all. I mean, how an IIR filter is working in detail, you can check in my last video. And yeah, basically that's all. And let's have a look how we integrate this now into our Bluetooth speaker. So this will be our loudspeaker, which we will modify. This is basically like a small standard loudspeaker with a five inch woofer or so. I don't know exactly how, how big it is. Uh, yeah, here on the back side we have our screw terminals to connect the audio amplifier. And the idea is basically that I will use them as power parts um, for supplying the internal circuitries. And I will remove now the speaker protection, uh, get out all the screws, and then we will have a look how it looks inside. The screws are removed now, and we have opened the enclosure. You can see this is our base speaker, Canton German loudspeaker manufacturer. This is our tweeter. And here we can put out the wool. Yes, also some like rubber stuff. I think that the enclosure um, has no air venting anymore. And here you can see we have like a passive frequency splitter that once again, the woofer only gets like low frequency signals and like Twitter only high frequency signals. But yeah, this frequency splitter we will remove completely because this is done um, inside our ESP32 um, as IR filters. So as you can see, I have connected everything together now. So this here is my ESP32 and I have connected here via the I2S bus my audio uh, DAC board uh, you have seen already in my last video. Um, this here, this is a small uh, DC to DC converter because I get here voltage of like 12 to 15 volts inside and I need to step down how somehow to five volts voltage to supply here the ESP. And then I have connected here the audio output. I directly soldered it here to the um, audio output soldier pads and I've connected it here to my glass D amplifier. So this is a TPA uh, 3116 from Texas Instruments. Very nice here because you can also set here once again the volumes for each channel. And here on the output basically I have connected one time here my woofer speaker and this here is my tweeter. Um, 
the class t amplifier i have connected already here to the power supply in the edge as you can see and now i would say let's try it out at first i would say i set the volume levels here to complete minimum i turn on the power supply unfortunately it, it is doing a little bit of crackling sound at the beginning and i don't know exactly where it comes from maybe because of a shitty design of this class d amplifier but let's see So this is like now 50 milliamps normal operating condition. You see also class D amplifier is working, ESP32 is working, audio DIC board is working. And now I will connect my smartphone here with that entry hello YouTube. So it says it is connected. And now let's play some sound through it. Yeah, press play. Like a little bit louder and now I will have a look how it sounds. So the bass speaker is already working, as you can hear. And this is now the tweeter. For sure, somehow we have to manage the gains. Uh, if I set here to absolute maximum volume, let's say maybe around about 80%, that I set the volume level here to a level that basically the speakers are not destroyed. So let's see how I can adjust it. Okay, this is a little bit too much, I would say. Maybe because also of too much output level. Maybe I can fix this in the code once again. Let's press play once again. For sure, I uh, don't have any enclosure now uh, um, um, uh, around the speaker, so I don't know how it will exactly sound when I have put it into the enclosure once again. But I would say I will now take all the components, I will put it inside the enclosure, fix it with um, some hot glue. So the um, assembly of the hot glue is now finished. As you can see, I'm using now the uh, loudspeaker connectors here for attaching the power supply. And I have also like the USB cable from the ESP32. Uh, made a small hole here that I still have the opportunity to program it later on. And here you can also look how it looks inside. So here in the middle, I attached the um, class D amplifier board. Here in the edge is the small uh, buck converter. And here on the upper side, I have here my DAC board and the ESP32. And like everything well fixed. I mean, okay, this is really not professional somehow, but um, maybe you have more um, ambitions to make it looking more nicely, let's say. So the speakers are also now connected once again to the um, class D amplifier board. Let's check a last try if everything works. Sounds good, so I will assemble it. Yeah, finally everything is assembled once again. This is now our nice looking USB DSP powered speaker. Here on the um, back side, I still have my uh, USB cable, which I have to connect once again to this uh, USB front end cable. So, but this is just soldering together. So that's no problem. And then I can program once again my ESP32. This here is just powered um, by my power supply. And now let's have a look how it sounds. Yeah, thanks guys uh, for watching also this time. I hope you liked my video and see you next time.